their ICT skills. Thus, the null hypothesis was rejected. Attitude towards ICT integration. It can be seen from the table that the teachers express a very highly positive attitude towards ICT integration with a grand mean of 4.53. It can be seen from the table that the teachers express a very highly positive attitude towards ICT integration. This implies that they perceive the usefulness and importance of integrating ICT in the teaching and learning process. In addition, it was observed that they manifested confidence in using ICT resources in their classes. In the advent of the 21st century, the teachers would not want to be considered left behind. In the first place, they are compelled to use technology in generating their reports and even in instruction. Capabilities and constraints on the teacher's level of competence in ICT. According to the figure, in terms of the teacher's level of competence in ICT, basic computer operations, internet, email, word processing, and presentation software were considered as capabilities, while spreadsheet and desktop publishing were considered as constraints. According to the figure, in terms of the teacher's level of competence in ICT, basic computer operations, internet, email, word processing, and presentation software were considered as capabilities, while spreadsheet and desktop publishing were considered as constraints. This implies that they were competent in handling these ICT resources as well as in the integration of ICT in instruction. Likewise, the finding further shows that they are proficient users in the identified ICT resources except in spreadsheet and desktop publishing. Hence, they need trainings and workshops to enhance their level of competence in ICT along spreadsheet and desktop publishing. Conclusions Based on the findings of the study, the following conclusions are drawn. 1. The teachers of the secondary schools in the school's division office, San Fernando City, are dominated by female, mixture of new in the service and experience, possess the needed educational qualifications, areas of specialization, and ICT trainings to enable them to teach effectively and efficiently. 2. All teachers use the ICT resources in the context of classroom practice, professional development, personal use, and administration. 3. Except in spreadsheet and desktop publishing, the teachers are knowledgeable and skillful in the different operations involved in basic computer operations, internet, email, word processing, and presentation software. 4. A. The teacher's extent of ICT utilization is affected by sex and area of specialization, but not by years of teaching experience, highest educational attainment, and ICT trainings attended. B. The teacher's level of competence in ICT is affected by sex, but not by years of teaching experience, highest educational attainment, area of specialization, and ICT trainings attended. C. The teacher's extent of ICT utilization is affected by level of competence in ICT. 5. The teachers are in favor in ICT integration and utilization. 6. Since the teachers have more capabilities than constraints in the areas evaluated on the teacher's level of competence in ICT, they are equipped with the needed skills and competencies in ICT. 7. The formulated ICT-based training program is a tool which enhances the teacher's ICT's competencies.
presentation. Right. To hear uh, his insights and the uh, comments and suggestions, may we hear from one of the education supervisors of the HRDD in the person of Dr. Raymond Molano. Good morning, po, Doc. Good morning, Mom Steph. Uh, thank you so much and good morning po sa ating uh, mga participants dito sa Zoom. Okay, so of course, we we first congratulate to our proponents po no, ng ating mga researches, uh, Ma'am Concepcion, uh, Ma'am Bindicta, and Ma'am Joy no, from the Alamina City Division. And so may I request na uh, i-open nila yung mga camera po nila, Ma'am Concepcion, Ma'am Bindicta, and Ma'am Joy. Yan. Congratulations mga moms no from Alamino City Division. And of course no, uh, congratulations din po kay Dr. Thea Medrano. And to so, Ma'am Thea. So kung napansin po natin no, both researches natin ay about the uh, ICT competence, so improving the teachers ICT competence. And that's very timely no. Uh, now a days kung saan yung yung ating teaching and learning process ay kailangan talaga ng ICT for us or to, to motivate no, yung ating mga uh, learners. Yan. At actually, no, may mga studies tayo and including the studies nung, nung dalawa is that the, the students are more, are more sophisticated in the use of uh, ICT than the teachers. No? And inherent to that is the discrepancy between student knowledge and usage of the ICT with the abilities of teachers to use ICTs. So that's why um, maganda na we propose uh, trainings or uh, in-service training para sa ating mga teachers. Yan. And and before we we propose yung mga trainings, no, gumawa tayo ng, ng needs assessment with, in which yung ating research, yung ating result ng research is one of our basis for needs assessment. Pwede naman din po tayong gumawa ng mga training designs based po sa uh, IPD or IDP ng ating mga teachers, no? which is the part 4 of our IPCRF. Sana naka-align din, no? naka din sa kanilang needs sa kanilang IPCRF itong ICT, no? improvement of ICT competence ng ating mga teachers. Ganun din sa iba pang mga ways po natin, no? just like our result of our classroom observation, kung saan pwede din po natin gawing basis yon for the proposal no ng ating mga uh, professional development programs yan so i think naman po that both research ay align naman po ang kanilang uh, align ang kanilang mga competencies no sa tinatawag po nating NEAP PD priorities so, ang NEAP po kasi uh, yung ating agency kung saan nakatoka sa mga professional development programs ng ating mga teachers, dapat meron tayong uh, uh, tinatawag nating priority programs, no? which is nandoon yung ICT, no? ICT. Kung saan din nakikita natin yan sa ating RPMS, PPST indicators. And of course, yung mapping po natin ng mga professional standards, so na nakita ko naman po that the training designs or yung yung implemented training ng dalawang researchers na ito ay nakamap at naka-align sa tinatawag nating PPST. And that's very good, no? Dapat naka-align lahat ng ating mga trainings para, para sa teachers doon sa kanilang professional standards. Pero may tanong lang po ako, no? It's just a clarification to our uh, ating mga proponents regarding the selection of the topic. Okay? So, it's our our ano, our training is all about uh, ICT no and our topic is regarding word processing electronic spreadsheet multimedia presentation etc so ano po ang ating basis no with the selection of our topic during po sa ating training umpisan po natin sa group ni na ma'am conception okay so Good morning po sa ating lahat. Um, thank you. I would like to thank, or we would like to thank uh, the uh, management group led by our director, Sir Valentin Aquino. And uh, of course, uh, my co-presenter uh, uh, who are here with us. 
and uh, that's something that I'm to the FBI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, with regards to the basis, uh, uh, we, we conducted the survey and uh, as well as the uh, test. Yeah. So through survey and pretest, ma'am, no? Yeah. Siguro ganun din siguro kay Dr. Taya. Right, ma'am? Sir, sa amin po, base po siya sa, it's actually base survey question din. Where it was found out that this was publishing and the participation are one, are actually one of their weakest link. That's why they are included in the program. Yeah. So, and you also included since Google Apps is uh, one of the trends for way back 2016 2017. So, you also included it. Thank you, Dr. Yan. Yun, yun. No, uh, mas maganda if yung ating mga topics, uh, sa ating mga training, ay yung pwedeng gamitin ng ating mga teachers during the teaching and learning process. But that's a very good no mga topic natin. And also one of uh one of our way you know, to quality assure our trainings is to uh is to apply for a NEA recognize or recognition and PRC accreditation. Ano po ang ang ating mechanism with regards to the quality assurance of our uh trainings? na kinunda po natin, which is the result of our research po. Umpisan po natin sa kay Dr. Taya naman this time. Ano po yung ating mechanism with regards to the quality assuring of our training design? Okay. Um, when we proposed that uh, training, sir, it was actually validated by the supervisor of TLE in our division, as well as with the help and guidance of our uh, research coordinator, we have our SEPs, uh, Dr. Kabusura. Then afterwards, um, we also have we also consulted Dr. Arthur June Booker Diogenas on the conduct of those trainings. Yeah. So everything was uh, actually conducted in consultation of the with, with the different heads and supervisors in our division. Yeah. And when we conducted the training, their presence were also there. Okay, thank you, Doc Taya. How about po sa group ni na Doc uh, Caracas? Okay, so with regards to our quality assurance, uh, we also conducted validation. Uh, we're in, uh, we consulted the uh, ICT experts, uh, especially in the uh, conduct of our uh, pre-test and post-test. Uh, it is in line with the ICT uh, uh, application, uh, which was uh, uh, which was uh, uh, included in our research. And of course, we also submitted our uh, training plan to the uh, uh, the division and it was approved. And uh, of course, uh, it is uh, quality assured also through the assistance of our uh, ICT coordinators in the uh, division. Yeah, so thank you so much. No, uh, that's very good that our our training designs or proposals are validated at the same time approved po na ating school division offices. But uh, in NAMR, uh, we encourage our uh, schools at ating mga SDOs to apply for NAMR recognized programs for us to help naman no, uh, yung ating mga teachers with regards to the professional development. So open naman po no, yung ating uh, pag-submit ng ating mga proposals. No? If you want to submit your training proposals using our NAYAP forms, no? and uh, we are very glad no? to check and to validate your training. So at the same time, yung ating tinatawag nating PRC accreditation, no? it's one way of helping our teachers with regards to uh, their uh, yung renewal ng kanilang PRC IDs. No? Mas maganda if our training programs ay PRC accredited. And connected with that is yung ating mga credentials or expertise ng ating mga resource speakers. Uh, one of the requirements kasi ng ating PRC ay dapat specialize 
At the same time, expert talaga doon sa ating uh, mga topics. No? I'm very sure naman that our, our, our resource speakers and learning facilitators sa ating na-conduct na uh, inset at the same time yung ating training ay expert no? at the same time, major talaga nila. Which is one of the qualifications na hinahanap po uh, pag magpapa-PRC accredited po tayo. No? Yan. So... Uh, at the same time, yung ating pong gel or output, I know we are all familiar with the gel, no? yung ating job embedded learning. Yung ito po yung output, dapat kasi lahat po ng ating trainings, especially in capacitating our teachers, ay dapat output-based. Uh, may I ask kung kamusta po ang mga output or ano po yung output natin sa ating training at the same time, kamusta naman po yung output nila during the training na conduct po natin. Ma'am uh, Concepcion? Okay, so with regards to the output, uh, of course, it was uh, applied in auto writing, especially in the pandemic. We uh, didn't know very well, but the uh, ICT demand uh, was uh, really a mass. And uh, of course, with regards to the job of the training that we have now, we have already started in our division. Actually, we have now the rollout. Uh, we need to conduct a lot of on this uh, to keep abreast on uh, the forthcoming uh, 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 teacher progression uh, plan in our department. And also, uh, in the uh, uh, basic of the classroom, it is being applied already. And uh, uh, we know very well that it is uh, fast changing. The ICT is fast changing, so we need to really uh, keep on track always. It's not only sometimes, but always. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Ma'am Concepcion. How about po, Dr. Thea? Thank you, sir. Actually, sir, in our division, it was actually being uh, applied, and their ICT competencies were enhanced to the point that they can create video lessons. And um, their um, product in terms of their school newspaper were also enhanced. And they also utilized their ICT competence when they came up with their own modules. And so that's very nice po, no, that the gel or tinatawag nating job embedded learning ay ginagawa na po natin sa ating respective SDOs. This is one way to also check no, or to monitor kung talagang natutunan or natuto talaga yung ating mga participants during our conduct training. I'll also, may I ask the number of uh, the number of participants during the training? Ma'am Thea, how many po yung mga teachers na na-train po? So due to limited um, budget po, we had only around 70 to 80 participants po. 70 to 80. Okay. We selected for those um, teachers with um, minimum competency. And how about po sa, sa group ni naman Concepcion? Uh, since it's an absent research for in the uh, school day, uh, we have only 27. So it's okay. all the teachers I did it. Okay, ma'am. So 27 po yung ating mga participants during the training. That's very good, no? Uh, with regards to the, ano, mag, yung kay Dr. Ay, 70 to 80, it's okay, no? But when we capacitate our teachers and it's all about capacity building, we just limit the number of our participants. So that's that's uh, standard, no? Sa ating NEA. Kasi we are talking about enhancing the competence para makita din natin kung talagang matutukan ng mga learning facilitators natin or mga resource speakers natin yung ating mga participants. That's why, that's the rational. That's why we limit the number of our participants, especially in upbuild natin natin. But if we have the rollout or mass, mass orientation, it's okay to reach 100 participants. But that's very good po na kaunti, no? Kaunti. Yan, yung ating mga participants para matutukan talaga no na ng ating mga resource speakers and facilitators no yung ating eh, yung ating mga teachers na uh, umaten po ng ating mga trainings yan yan pamusahin ko naman po yung ating monitoring and evaluation no it's a very, this is a very important part ng ating uh, training you know uh, the, the the monitoring and evaluation alam ko tapos na ang pagconduct natin ng ating training 
So, ano po ang ating uh, mechanism with regards to the monitoring and evaluation? Kasi uh, there are conception or misconception that the training, basta, kunwari, it's a three-day tra three training. So, after three days, no, wala na tayong balita sa ating mga participants. But it is very important that after the three-day training or five-day training, may mga ano pa tayo follow up sa kanila for us to uh, to check if na really that our objectives during the the training ay na-meet natin, no? Doc Tea. Okay, Actually po, um, when it comes to monitoring po, um, we, um, after that po, we had those contests po, like um, in Region po, Region 1, they conduct this um, newspaper contest or article po, journalism contest. So, actually, their, um, those competencies na na-enhance sa kanila, they were actually applied as well as they transferred out din po nila sa mga learners. Where yeah. they competition. So, yun po yung isa na maganda po. Kasi in our division po, noon po, um, desktop publishing is for only those uh, involved in journalism. So, after our training, so they came... Uh, yung desktop, desktop publishing is actually all for teachers. So, marami pa palang teachers. So, yun yung isa to na pump out po ng mga teachers na hindi lang pala pang journalism. So, ganun, yun yung isa po na na-appreciate na lumabas po sa study ko na. Yeah. So, thank you, Dr. Tea. And sa group naman po ni Dr. Uh, Concepcion? Uh, of course, with regard to mga taring, uh, it is a continuous uh, action because uh, in the classroom observation, uh, in the conduct of our classroom uh, uh, observation, the, uh, the COT, uh, the ICTRF, uh, this is embedded already in the job. So ICT application is embedded uh, even in the uh, latest uh, ICT or RP and F2. And uh, another uh, uh, monitoring is uh, on the uh, uh, various activities that we have uh, in the DEPF. So, say for example, online content, uh, online training. So, so really, ICT is uh, uh, it is really very much needed. And uh, for the evaluation, uh, of course, uh, we have here what um take. Yes, sir. So we follow them up through. Um, classroom observation and at the same time since I, have, I, I am already in the division office we encourage also the, the teachers or the school heads to conduct lock sessions with regards to ICT but then as you had said a while ago sir we base it according to their to, to the needs of the teachers so nandun po yung ano up po namin and then alam po namin na nag-a-plan natin i-update yung kanilang knowledge sa ICT Kaya sabi namin, we try to encourage them, the school heads, to conduct lab sessions that could help the teachers improve their ICT competence. Ayan. So thank you so much, Ma'am Benedicta and Ma'am Concepcion and Dr. Eliana. That's, that's very nice that uh, after the training, ay meron pa rin tayong monitoring and evaluation. And on the, on the uh, yung quick practice model natin on MNE, no, yung ating pinaka-performance talaga, it's it's on based on the IPCRF ng ating mga teachers. Doon natin makikita if they really improve no sa ating sa ating uh, competence regarding ICT. And so we're very happy here no that all the mechanisms with regards to the MNE no ng ating mga professional development programs ay ginagawa po natin sa ating respective school and school division offices. Oh, and then na natamanggit na, din ni Ma'am Santos yung ating lock session na uh, since our teachers are now ano no mahirap na silang tawagin uh, maliban sa inset week no based on our deped calendar we we uh, encourage to implement yung or maximizing the lock session no? it's a very good avenue para i-cascade din yung ating mga natutunan sa mga different trainings and workshop na, na uh, ano natin din no? na na atindan din natin in the previous years for them for also for our colleagues sa ating mga schools no uh, alam ko hindi naman lahat ay ay nakakapunta sa mga division and regional trainings so it's a very good avenue no yung ating learning action cell 
no, for for them to also enhance with their respective uh, competencies na kailangan din nila. With that, congratulations again no to our proponents, um Concepcion, Ma'am Benedicta, Ma'am Joy of Alamina City Division, and Dr. Thea Medrano from San Fernando City Division. Congratulations and God bless us all. Hello, Mom Steph. Thank you very much. Thank you for the name. I need to be. All right, we're going to go to our last but not the least presenter. This morning, we have the presence also of Dr. John Sylvester Alipio. Ayan. To give us, to give a background. Doctor, he is a doctor of philosophy, major in science education at Lyceum Northwestern University. He is a school principal one at Federico Enceralde Integrated School at SDO Dagupan City. He is also awarded as the most outstanding innovative school leader by Magister Servus. Also regional first placer of best action research paper at the Regional Research Congress in 2017. He received the Certificate of Recognition as the school head of a SBM Level 3 appraised. And he's also a school and Certificate of Recognition holder at the regional level, Rank 3 Best Implementing School, Brigada Escuela Mega School Category. One of the most outstanding master teachers and a two-time birth grantee. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Dr. John Sylvester A. Alipio. Good day to all. I hope all is well. To all the lovers and enthusiasts of research all over the Philippines and in the entire region, my greetings. To our highly esteemed head patriarch in the regional office, our regional director, Tolentino G. Aquino, the chief of the PPRD, Dr. Cecilia Pirocido, to all the brilliant schools division superintendents, the SDO of the Lupan City, led by our SDS Sir Aguilo and SDS Sir Marciano, I will be much pleasured in getting insights from you as you gain a newer perspective in my study. Your valuable time and shared inputs is greatly appreciated by all schools and all those who love research. I am pleased to present to you my study entitled Improving the Research Skills of Teachers to Revitalize Research and Development Program. This is a research on human resource development presented during the first research forum 2023. I am John Sylvester A. Alipio, a humble public servant, the school principal of Federico and Serral Integrated School from SDO Tagupan City Presenting. The Department of Education is mandated to provide quality-based education to all Filipinas. And this is enshrined in the 1987 Philippine Constitution also enshrined in Republic Act 105.33 and in Republic Act 95.11. Research is a main pillar of the Department of Education in formulating evidence-based decisions and policies aimed to provide quality basic education. And we all know that research is a vehicle, a means to achieve all of this purpose. The Department of Education has issued the Order Number 39, Series 2016, entitled Adoption of Based Research Agenda, which serves as a guidance in the conduct of research and utilization of research outputs. And through the issuance of this Order, 
the Department of Education, Division of the Gupan City, had seen the need to revitalize the research process and the utilization of the division as school-wide action researchers. Thus, revitalized research and development program was crafted. This revitalized research and development program is a division initiative in research under Project Tengage of the flagship Project FINA. Hence, there is a need to study the effectiveness of the new and fortified intervention for the research and development program of the division. The revitalized research and development program under the enhanced planning and research program in achieving the goal to improve the research skills of teachers in the entire division. It is in this context that this research was being conducted so as to modify or to change or to terminate the current practice in the research and development with the primary goal of improving the research skills of teachers. And these are the questions which guided this study. This study aims to determine the effect of the revitalized research and development program on the teaching skills and research skills of teachers. Specifically, it seeks to answer the following sub-problems. The first one is, what is the level of teaching skills and research skills of teachers before and after the implementation of the revitalized research and development program being the intervention identified. And the second one is, is there a significant effect of the aforementioned research initiative in enhancing the research skills of teachers? Sub-problem one will be answered using frequency count and mean. The sub-problem number two will be answered using the test. And to do further probing or investigation, quality data analysis using the score synthesis will likewise be employed. In terms of its research design, this study employed mixed model, entering on quantitative and qualitative data analysis. Quantitatively, the study employed the quasi-experimental design using pre-test process with survey questionnaire as the main instrument. And qualitatively, further probing of quantitative data were carried through qualitative triangulation techniques, which includes semi-guided interviews, focus group discussion, or FGDs, and in-situ observation using field notes. The intervention of this study is the RRDP, or the Revitalized Research and Development Program under the project linkage, under the flagship project FINA. The activities include research training, presentation of action research proposal and findings, verb orientation, and continuous research coaching. You can see here the pictures of the division research committee conducting the RRDP, or the Revitalized Research and Development Program. With with the former SDS, Proserpina Bravo, and ASDS, Lourdes Servito. So this includes research training, presentation of action researches before a research committee, and continuous research coaching. So all of these are under the Revitalized Research and Development Program, or the RRDP. In terms of its sampling, a purposeful sample of 32 participants using two inclusion criteria. The first one is they should have an experience in conducting research under RRDP or a teacher who has submitted a research proposal is likewise considered. And in terms of data collection, the 14-item checklist of research skills adapted from the G-STAR instrument by David Feldon from the University of Virginia and Joanna Gilmer from University of South Carolina were likewise employed. 
In terms of data gathering, the triangulation method was being used using checklist or questionnaire, followed by casual interview, and of course, focus group discussion. Now, let us proceed to the results. You can see here the skills assessment in the pre-test and post-test, and you can see that all of the indicators have gained in the mean. As can be clause in the table shown earlier, there are three underrated skills, and this include writing skills, sense of big picture, and time management. The above findings show that these three indicators were less enhanced research skills because these indicators can be enhanced through time and practice, which cannot just be uh, gained in the setting of the intervention used in this study. Validating the responses using focus group discussion and interview, some respondents stated, I really wanted to conduct an action research since I think I am motivated, but I am not confident with the technical aspect like writing and data gathering. I need more exposure. Others say in terms of loads, the voluminous work of load, and someone say in terms of adjustment from HEI to that end. The findings imply that writing skill and locating information skills are perfected through time and practice. The studies of Sajil Meyer and Bailon found that writing skills and increased skills are both enhanced through time and practice. While the voluminum work and endless expectations of the nature of the work, it is no wonder that teachers are really having difficulties to meet both ends, thus results on their ability to manage one's time in order to yield research. In terms of the test to determine whether the intervention has a significant effect, it shows the significant value of 0 0.00 confirmed that the intervention is highly effective. And we can conclude now that the revitalized research and development program and new and fortified intervention was effective in improving the research skills vis-a-vis -vis the teaching skills of teachers. Research and development activities are essential in the development of teachers' teaching and research skills, and engaging in research will improve in teachers' skills vis-a-vis -vis teaching skills, as teachers are already practicing the scientific inquiry of research. However, there are indicators which restrict the full development of research competency such as writing skills, locating information, and time management, because these skills are perfected or enhanced through time and practice. So what's in the future? Now we are in 2023. From 2015, what is now the impact of this research? In terms of its development in SDO Dagupan City, we have this project EQR, the Easy Quick Research under the leadership of SDS, Sir Agibasi Fernandez, with Sir Marciano Yusuriano Jr. as our chair for the Division Research Committee, facilitated by SEPS for Planning and Research, Dr. Maria Victoria S. Antonio. In terms of access, this research serves as a tool to improve the research skills and teaching skills of teachers to better serve and reach all learners. In terms of quality, the results of this research is being used in ISO, being the research as the one of the main focus of SDO, the group and city. And because of this research, it's also intensified the research and development activities. And in terms of governance, the research and development is one of the project flagship project of the SD of the Group and City. And we are still looking forward to the sustainability of efforts, awards, and recognition in the field of research. You can see here that in 2023, the present year, these are the gleaming smiles of the members of the Division Research Committee as they pursue the, the goal to improve the quality of education through research. The findings of the SDO fortify the vision of the Gupan City that the new division, Balotrai, Go ISO, the Gupan SDO is realizable through research. So from that year, 2015, and until now, 2023, SDO, the Gupan City supports the Ed 1 QMS. With that, this is Sir John from SDO, the Gupan City, 
saying thank you for listening to me. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you very much, Doc John. May we now hear also insights from one of the HRDD supervisors, Dr. Junior Valdez, sir. And good morning. Uh, I hope I'm, I'm clear to everyone. Good morning, po, and um, thank you once again, Mom Steph. Congratulations, uh, Sir John Sylvester Alipio of the Bupan City Division. Okay, or you have presented a very good uh, study, which is an action research on improving the research skills of teachers through the revitalized research and development program. Right? Is uh, Sir Alipio with us? So, kung pwede po sana makikita din natin ang ating uh, proponent, ang ating presenter, para mag-usap lang po tayo. Ayan. Alright, so... Again, this study is, um, yes, good morning po and congratulations, Sir John Sylvester. Uh, the study that you have actually, um, that you have conducted is something very, very important, something that's very, very good as well, uh, especially na we, teachers, school leaders, and, um, uh, yeah, and national leaders really need to enhance our research skills, diba? So, commendable po yung ating study. So, as at the same time, I have seen from the, I have listened to your, to your presentation and seen that the intervention actually was really on uh, a revised a revitalized research and development program. Na kung saan galing ito sa isang mother or umbrella program ng division. Am I ako na sir sir Sylvester? Oh, well, yes. Now the question now here is how long was the intervention? How, how what's the time frame or the framework of the intervention? Because <laughs> Yung intervention po natin, napaka-importante po yan, ano? Sige, Sir John. Uh, based on my study, and I will base it on the uh, timeline, uh, the intervention started uh, started in last May 23, 2015, and it ended until... November 17, 2016. So okay. Almost uh, seven months. Almost seven months. And that's very good for an intervention for an action research. Well, I understand this is not uh, a continuous uh, no, 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 intervention. This is uh, based on uh, no, uh, Sir John. Yes, po, Sir. Okay. During the time of our former SDS, Professor Fina Bravo, it is really. Uh, a, new, a new direction for the deaf ed to focus on research because before research is just embedded in CLMD or in the curriculum under the EPSS. But now with the rationalization plan, they have separated the, the research as a uh, core functions of the division. And that's why the Division of the Gupan City has seen this need to focus on research. Okay, I understand that, sir. And uh, thank you so much for uh, embarking really on the enhancement of our research skills of the teachers. So, some points for clarification, na po, sir, sir uh, John Sylvester. I'm just wondering how the results of the pretest uh, contributed or impacted or affected the crafting of the interview questions. Considering that the questions that you have uh, asked actually focused on four areas, which is on the revitalized research and development program. Ang tanong ko po, paano po naka-impact or paano naka-affect yung results ng pretest sa pagka-craft ng questions? Uh, the results of the pretest serves as the uh, benchmarking or the initial data which prompted the entire division to really look into focusing on development of research skills because as per pretest, uh, it showed that they have a low uh, skills in terms of research. And so yes, the uh, pretest really guided the entire division to, hey, there is a need for us to 
look into the research skills of teachers because this is the purpose of the DepEd. We really wanted us to provide uh, research-based interventions and research-based policies, but the teachers are not yet ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, sir. Okay. Yeah, I understand that. Pero yung paano po tayo nakapag-craft ng mga, mga interview questions, okay? At uh, saan po nang galing yung mga interview questions natin? Uh, what, what are the inspiration of the, the, in the interview questions that we have asked our um, esteemed formants? Opo. The, the interview questions are actually uh, are, are based on semi-strict structure form wherein um, if there are verifications to be made from the quantitative data analysis from the uh, checklist, it will be uh, through an interview yeah. or focus group discussion. It will supply yes, sir. what is the missing or what is not provided by numbers. Yeah. So, uh, I agree with that, sir. No? Uh, kasi parang nakita ko po kasi dito sa sa inyong uh, presentation na ang sinasabi po natin, uh, the questions, actually, the open-ended questions that were used uh, focus on the benefits derived in conducting an action research, the difficulties they experienced, and at the same time, the best feature or the contribution of the RRDP, and at the same time, the, the aspect that needs uh, improvement. So, ang, ang, ang tinipin point po natin dito, the, the since this is a uh, triangulation, it follows a triangulation from the quantitative, the results of the pretest should have been used to come up with or to craft different questions, you know? uh, to come up with questions sa para ma-validate natin kung ano ba yung result ng quantitative na po yan. Yeah, sir. Any, yes, sir. Anyhow, um, with regard to the themes, yes, I understand that you also tried to uh, to categorize or to study the different um, uh, statements given by your informants and as you have mentioned you you try to categorize them into themes but um in your presentation or did, did i just miss out did we see the themes that uh, came out from your study my, my research did not go that far of doing meta-analysis of categorizing the, the responses into themes rather it is just only a supplementation of the numerical information or the numbers mm -hmm. ah, uh, I beg to uh, to inform you that my research did not go into the meta-analysis part. Okay. Yes, sir. I ask that because in your abstract and even in the presentation, uh, you tried to mention that uh, the main instruments supplanted by the semi-guided interviews, which were transcribed, analyzed, and extracted to find things. So it did not undergo the meta-analysis part. Yes, okay, sir. Okay, yes, thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. So with that, well, um, the challenge therefore is um, one, well, one of your identified conclusions, if I could recall number four of your conclusions, is on indicator that uh, there are indicators which restrict the full development of research competency of our teachers. Now, uh, this is now where the HR has to come in. How will, how will we address these at present? Especially that this was conducted 2016 to 20, uh, 2015 to 2016, tama po ba? So yes, I think these particular constraints, these particular uh, indicators remain to be true until today. Especially so that you have mentioned that this really need time element, right? So yes, yeah, ang, ang, ang suggestion na lang po natin, so as far as to be, since we cannot uh, redo the study anymore because it has been completed, um, and we, since this is, as you have mentioned in your presentation, this is a human resource study, uh, we at the Human Resources Development Division and uh, NEA, our training arm, are actually welcoming, as, as mentioned by Sir Raymond and Kalina, welcoming proposals, training proposals for uh, to be quality assured and be certified for us to be able to further develop the competency of our teachers and all other school personnel. So. With regard to, to the question, with these results of the study, what learning and development interventions can be further proposed that could be, number one, aligned to the IPDP or to the Individual Professional Development Plan of the teachers or the development needs of the teachers? So, siguro research more particularly, uh, more particularly sa ating mga master teachers, ano, because they are, they are, uh, they are tasked so to speak, to, to assist, to collaborate with other teachers, with the, with the proficient teachers in coming up with research. And of course, 
you cannot give what you do not have. Di po ba? Ang ibig sabihin niyan, the teachers, the, this, these teachers cannot come up with a research if they lack competency. That's why your action research is very, very essential. It's really commendable. Okay? So to reiterate lang po, sir, school-based personnel can already apply to the division. They can, can, can submit training designs for certification for their uh, for NAYAP certification or accreditation and even perhaps PRC accreditation. Ano? So, kailangan lang po natin i-aralin ulit sa mga teachers na meron tayo ngayon, sa mga teachers na, na sa, sa division natin ngayon, ilan sa kanila ang nangangailangan pa rin ng training on research and specifically what particular aspect of research writing should be focused on. Okay? And this will now be your input Toward, towards designing training these and training programs that are that will be submitted for quality assurance and certification to NAYAP and PRC. And again, on the part of the HRDD NAYAP, what uh, and even our our counterpart in the PPRD, what technical assistance can be provided to our teachers so that pagdating ng next round of COT evaluation and even in your preparation of your MOBs for your RTMS ay meron tayong i-attach na MOB na research because I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is also one of our MOBs na pwede natin um, may pakita para lalo natin mapagtibay na hey, we are doing something not just to develop our learners but we are also developing ourselves and at the same time contributing much to the body of knowledge. So yun lang po yung input ko sa inyo, Sir, sir uh, John Sylvester. Congratulations po and uh, we hope that you will not stop 2016 po nangyari to and uh, we, we hope that your your efforts will continue to make the the training program sustainable kasi kapag na-stop yung program medyo mahihirapan po ulit tayo na mag-start anew so perhaps from that time on we can sustain our efforts so that we can continuously help and capacitate our human resources so congratulations sure. once again sure. Ma'am Steph, back to you po Actually, I would like to commend our SD. Thank you very much, Dr. Ne. And, uh, and thank you very much for your presentation.